can I get that? Trump, can I get that? Remy, can I get that? Coke, can I get that? Henny, can I get that? Margarita on the rock, rock, rock. Can I get salt all around that? Rum, 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 tray. I was like, yo, tray. Do you think you can buy me a bottle of rose? Okay, let's get it now. I'm with a bad bitch. He's with his friends. I don't say hi. I say keys to the vents. Keys to the vents. Keys to the vents. I'm not right now. Eat to the ten. If it's shy, get cute. I'm a stuff Throw a lot on the Then yo, fucka, fucka, fucka. Then yo, fucka. Then I'm going at my little slug. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm really such a lady. I rap young money. You know Slim, baby, and we be doing donuts while we wave in the 380. We gave a lot of money to the babies out in Haiti, yelling all around the world. Do you hear me? Do you like my body? And a Nikki, rest in peace to Anna Nicole Smith. Yes, my D is so explosive. Say hi to Mary, Mary and Joseph. Now bottoms up and don't below search. <laughs> that was really insane. That was really, it was neat. That was kind of amazing, and like I think that that just brought the energy up to a point that. I'm gonna. We're gonna keep it there. A good children. I'm not kidding. I need a full body shiatsu in the next week, or I'm gonna be shiat out of here. I'm pretty sure you're frequently shiating. <laughs> I've been shiating and shiating everywhere, but I need to be, so, and I will be getting sued. So I'm sure, I'm sure we could just, I'm sure we could just combine it. Yeah. Hey guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship, growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, drama, and. Flirting, dating, sucking, fucking mm. that comes along with it. And having fun. That was your theme, right? Is yeah. Just, we're just having fun. Joe was like, what's the theme for today? I was like, we're just going to have fun. We're having fun. And sometimes when you look at it that way, like those are the best episodes. Mm -hmm. Because when you come in with like a strict theme, then you feel like you have to stay on it. Sometimes it doesn't get fun. It's no longer fun for those involved. You're not having fun? I'm having so much fun today. You look very good. You again, like it's every week is different with you. You never know what you're gonna get. Like this week, we're back to conservative core. Like yes. this week, it's giving like not just conservative core. It's giving like you're outside. You're using your hands. You're Hell yeah. you're Hell raking yeah. up those leaves. It is the fall, but also in the same breath, you're raking up those leaves, and then you're kind of judging me if I walked by. Well, let's go, Brandon. Well, I was like, what do you mean, let's go, Brandon? It's still like, the, regardless of the amount of times that I either see that or someone, no one ever really says that besides you. Um, I'm never saying it. You're always bringing up Brandon. I'm literally never bringing You're up Brandon. You're always saying, fuck Brandon. Unless I'm like going on a date with Brandon, like, fuck, yeah, let's fuck Brandon. I'm not going anywhere with Brandon. I just like, I can't even get, I can't. I can't with you. With me? Yeah. Have you ever had a crush on your life? Joe, I've had so many crushes in my life that it's not normal. Have you ever had a crush on a straight boy? I feel like we've talked about this, and my scary, sad answer is yes. Okay, I was actually thinking us, about oh, this. Yeah, go, go right ahead. I was actually thinking about this because, well, I've, I we kind of touched on it in our Patreon episode, but... I've been going for the wrong man. I've been going for well, yes. I've been going for a little bit of like, what would you say? I would say there's a few layers here. Okay, please. Because let's, I think let's there's I think there's a lot dissect it like a cake. Well, here's Andrew, and I said this on Patreon as well. You're there's so many you're so many amazing positive attributes, you know. And then I would say on top of those, you're like really in touch with. I can tell it's you're in touch. You're the feminine side. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm. Like you have that going for you. I think that you are like open and bubbly about your life and i feel like you have body image issues for sure and i feel sure. like as a result of a few of those things you look for the opposite yes to like cure some of that mm -hmm. from yourself because i'm like okay if i'm dealing with all of these different things and somebody who is the complete opposite wants me that proves I'm like, to you that you're oh, worthy i'm healing Right. Meanwhile, there's reality. no healing that's going along because you know what? I need a few band aids when they decide to ghost, when they decide to block, you need some when they stop sanoderm. I see sanoderm. What the hell is sanoderm? Like that clear, the clear band aids. Yeah, I need some clear band aids for sure. Some ace I'd put bandages. A, I'd put a few ace bandages around my body. Did you have a phase? I had a phase in like elementary oh school where like I remember like. 
<laughs> I'd like hurt my arm a little bit or like I would like stub my toe and I'd be like, Dad, like, can you please drive me to CVS? Like I need an ace bandage. And I would just like wear it for like two weeks. Was it like it was cool that you were like I like loved up? having an ace bandage on like all, it was so frequent I was always wrapping my body up in an ace bandage. What made an ace bandage specific to ace? Hardware? Yeah, it's just not like, the same thing. Oh, what's an ace bandage? It's then? like it's just I think that's the brand of the bandage. Oh, I thought you were talking. You're going to Ace Hardware. You don't know what ace bandage. bandages? I feel like I do. They're like the you know it's like the flexible like oh, wrappable yeah, 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 yeah. like. It's the, like it's like the it's like almost nude. Well, it's it's white nude. Yeah, white is nude. what it is. Anytime I had a bruise, I was wrapping up my body in an ace bandage. I honestly like. I almost wonder if it's better to flex the bruise. Well, no, I I felt I think I was projecting onto others a sports injury. I think that was the goal. Because again, people look at you and they say athlete, athlete, but realizing that probably what you like bumped into or like fell onto was like a littlest pet shop in your yeah i was doing a plie in yeah. the playroom and hit my foot on like my boom box my hand yeah. kind of boom box i was chasing you in the backyard as we were doing a hunger Games skit yeah well that was a little beyond those years i stopped I ace bandaging in high school okay i guess that makes sense like you kind of level out of that yeah but back to it back to it so your ace bandage is sometimes a men that reflects all the things that you feel you are not oh absolutely absolutely so i go for like the bad, the bad boy. You know what I mean? I'm like, ooh, there's something kind of crazy about this. And then the conversation doesn't flow. I'm somebody who accepts conversation as it is. I'm never going to let a conversation be bad. Well, maybe sometimes some of these episodes, you never know. But with these conversations, I'm like, oh, my God, these conversations are so good. But to your point, it's like I'm not going to be at a skate park. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to be doing a, a trolley flip. What are they called? An ollie? An ollie. A trolley flip? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're doing so well on your, your trolley, trolley flips. flips. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. So, like, but I would support anyone in anything that they do. And I think of that's course. one of my things. That's it's your, like, that is your blessing and your curse. And that's why when I you're go through. so Andrew Muscarella enchanted. You're so Ella enchanted. I, since I saw that movie. You said, I'm Ella. I've always thought of Is that Ella. why you wanted to name your daughter Ella? Ella. Don't you think, though? Like, down, like okay, let's really dissect Ella Enchanted Ella for a second. Ella Enchanted. Because it's like, okay, so Ella, like, she's kind of, like, born into this family. And she has these stepsisters. Like, she's kind of giving Cinderella, right? Cinderella, Ella, Muscarella. And then she's kind of, like, being told what to do. And she's doing everything that she's yes, told to she do. she can't not. She can't not because, like, and same because, like, I have a guilty conscience. Well, Ella, I feel like Ella, Ella Enchanted is just a movie about not having boundaries, right? It's like she can't say no. She yeah, she can't say herself, no. Yeah. And even like, when she wants to. Yeah. But, like, little did she know Megan Trainor didn't release the song yet because her name was mm, Yes. And I have to say that I do feel like I was her until, and even throughout the throughout the last scene when she started singing, "Don't Go Breaking My Heart," <laughs> and I feel like I'm I'm still saying that "Don't Go Breaking My Heart." I couldn't if I tried. So, what was the point? Oh yeah, so straight boy crushes. Yeah. So back to the straight boy crushes. Yes, I I do tend to have straight boy crushes crushes. Oh my god. It's like you're on the witness stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't speak. I can't speak. Um, I've been doing that lately. I've been slurring my speech. Even when like kind I'm kinda same. Kind of yeah. same. What is that? Is it like a brain dysfunction? It's the eclipse. We're between two eclipses. <laughs> between two it's eclipses. the total eclipse of our speech. Yeah. Um But with straight crushes, I'm really trying to pull myself back from idealizing or looking at straight men and being like oh i wish i could like i think it's hard because it's like i can still find them hot but i don't want to get like the skims this this is perfect oh skims for men the skims i have for a men. lot of thoughts on skims for we men. can talk about skims for men but the skims for men right as a child if i was to see that i'd be like it'd be game over whoa like i actually won need to look like that Two, like want to marry that man and three like i'll be looking at that picture for the rest of my the, to the dawn of day now i'm looking at that man that everyone's sharing i don't even know his him name. the trump supporter is he 
Yes. Is. Yes. Trump oh. supporter hates Beyonce. And one other thing that he I also saw. was giving in the ad that he didn't want to do it. Also, the thing about the Skims Through Men ads is, and I, Kim, I mean, Kardashian family, take them as they are, but why is it all ugly? Why is all the underwear ugly? I'm sorry. It looks like shit so? that you could have bought from ASOS 10 years ago. Like, yeah. why is nothing cute? Like, I have been waiting for Skims for Men since Skims launched. Like, yeah. I was like, here we fucking go. I'll get like my I, I could come put me in the fucking boardroom because put first of all, room. why are all your models? I mean, everyone well, is exceptionally hot, but they're athletes. So you're I mean, sure. She's selling to the women who buy skims to buy for their boyfriends. You know what I mean? Like that is the market. Yes. But like isn't skims to like also help shape celebrate wear. your body like well, to shape, celebrate it, celebrate but, like shape wear, right? Yes. Like shape, whatever. Yeah. But like. Wouldn't you be catering to men who also want shape? Well, wear? yes, it would make more sense to do that. But she's catering. To, it's like the most traditional form of marketing I've ever seen. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, you've done such wild things with like, even in the craziest way. And this is the opposite of what you're saying. Book Troy Sivan. Yeah, he's willing. He's able. He is the number one name on gay people's mouths right now. Put him in a fucking jock strap. Why are there no jock straps? Why are there no thongs? Yeah. Why is it traditional men's underwear? I don't know. For Kim Kardashian, I don't know. Who's posed in a jock strap before for a magazine? Listen, I wouldn't talk too much about Skims because one day they're gonna come knocking on our door. Yeah, and I'm gonna say I have a few ideas for you guys. And I'm gonna say let's get creative. I'll let's wear the reinvent underwear. the wheel. I'll wear. I will. And wear I'll say the one underwear. more thing. Where are the bulges? Where are the bulges? They smooth. They smooth. They smooth to the point where I, I wouldn't buy the underwear because I'd say, if that's what that guy's dick looks like in that underwear, why would I buy this? Exactly. Because it's not going to do me But that's to the point. It's like, if you're not even seeing bulges, people are sharing this. Like, I'm seeing gay men share it to their story. And so you're all you're sharing it for is, is the six pack that that yes, man has. Yeah. And like, that's a completely different side of the coin. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm trying to disassociate from uplifting straight men on social Release media platforms releasing my mind and saying you know what yeah is he objectively hot sure i'm not going to engage in this content because it's only going to further the narrative that i'm attracted to straight men and then i'm only going to make myself more upset when yeah. i can't actually put it into action see you know that's good for you i feel like that's really huge growth for you I think i'm very is. proud of you i think it is and that's why it's like if i'm if i'm scrolling if i'm like oh that man has an only fans not to say that i'm subscribing to only fans but if i was well i am why are you lying no that? i literally not lie. i literally am but i'm like i'm trying to also not do that for straight men yeah because i'm like it's not my place it's like i it's just they're like profiting off of like that vulnerability of gay men too which yeah I think oh is absolutely interesting um i've never been one to develop feelings for a straight man really ever i really really but i also don't think i ever developed feelings for a gay man you know i think well, that like it was neither same yeah yeah like it took me like by the time i got to the point where i would start like actually having my like, crushes on men i was old enough mm -hmm. to like tell myself i think i've also been a very logical person to a fault for most of my life where yeah. I was able to look at myself and be like, well, that is not for you. So you were good at that. Like even like middle school, high school, I feel like we've never. talked about this before. You didn't really like want to be with any of those, the kids that we were in school with. There was one, one kid in high school who I thought was like hot, but I know I never believed that I would get beyond the fact that he was hot. No, yeah. you don't. You're thinking of, it's not him? No, because he you thought he was hot, but he was not my type. I thought he, you thought he was hot. No, you thought he was hot. That's crazy, Joe, because I thought that his name was on the tip of your tongue. No, that was you. No, yeah, I never had that. But I think that it's... I So I clearly can't even speak to it, but I imagine it is such a difficult thing to go through. For sure. It is a difficult thing to go through, and I think that, like, at, at this point in life, it's like, don't you agree, like... I don't have too many straight guy friends. I actually, though, have a good amount. But it, when I do have conversations with straight men that I do click with, it's not like a, I'm attracted to you. It's kind of like a relief. I'm like, oh, this is actually nice and this is actually yeah. refreshing and you can keep up and we can have conversations that aren't like – and I also like – I like to talk to anybody about anything. So whether it's – a girl that's coming to me talking about guys, like I can do that. Or if a guy's talking to me about girls, like I like, I like just to talk. I like people to open up to me. Yeah. 
And it's it is refreshing when I can do that with a straight man. And when not you find, find out that a straight man like uses their brain, it is always a huge relief. It I'm is a like, really nice feeling. Yeah. No. Otherwise, but as I do the eye roll, I'll roll my eyes right at gay men as well because I think that they are just as, if not worse, than when straight it, men. At when this it point. comes to what everything. Oh, Joe, for sure. Everything. Oh, for sure. Sometimes I catch myself. Being homophobic? Well, I honestly think that I've been peeling back layers of homophobia. Yeah, sure. As we all do. Sometimes you catch yourself what? Being, like, bad. Being, like, pretty objectifying. Yes. Yeah, and I catch – I mean, like, again, I think that most people do experience that – or men experience that. I'm sure women do it as well, but, like, more in a way that, like – when a straight guy sees a woman and they're like, damn. Yeah. Well, like, you've always look been at an that ogler. Ass. Yeah. Like, an ogler, ogle, ogle, oogle. I'll oogle, I'll goggle, I'll Google. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm Googling, but I, I'll look and I'll be like, whoa. Yeah. And then I'm like, Andrew, what's up? No, that's, I mean, I think that that is, I think that. Gay men have become so emboldened in their persecution throughout their childhoods and their adulthoods of feeling like, you know, like they're less than. And so they've decided they could just be literally just as objectifying and as disgusting as a straight Mm -hmm. man would be to a woman. Yeah. And like, I just saw, um, LOL Overruled, who is a TikToker. He's a lawyer. He posted about like, Palestine and like the Holocaust and like this like complicated emotional like TikTok about like just like his views on what's happening in the world and he's replying to a comment and the comment is like you're gonna have to put away your chest hair if you want me to pay attention to anything but that when you're talking and he was like this is in response to a video of me talking about the Holocaust like it is that it is like the level of like yeah and it's the same thing it's like put away your tits you know like yeah. but like we don't like it's just like the way the way that gay men speak to each other is heinous it's like it's but it's it's just a, it is gay men it's across the board like sometimes i just like to look at com- i've been really in the comment sections lately like i've been scrolling because now i'm just like when i see somebody post something specifically if it's a woman like and she posts and she looks good i'm like oh stunning and then i'm going through the comments and i'm like oh my god yeah. the only thing that people are pointing out are her boobs yeah. like this is like that's obviously not what the post that's is not about. the post is about yeah. like it's that's what she looks like that's right. who she is yeah but like that's all we're gonna comment on like come on it's crazy but back to dating oh yeah what how have we as a society when it comes to dating apps how can we get away how do you get away from that though because like all you're judging people off of is what they look like so I see these photos and I'm like hot not hot you gotta not. get deeper you gotta, gotta get, get deeper. deeper you gotta you gotta like literally unlock the third eye you have to look at those pictures and you have to get creative it is okay. not about looking at someone's physical appearance you gotta look at where are they where are they who took that picture mm. what are, what the fuck are they wearing what the fuck are those shoes so this okay i want to bring this up i want to bring this up because i've been having this battle lately when it comes to dating, when it comes to what people wear, when it comes to things like that in general, do you see, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you date somebody and you go on dates with them, in the back of your mind, are you ever thinking, that's a fixer-upper, or am I a problem? I think it depends. I th- Well, I have two, two sides to this coin. One, people don't change. So I think if you're thinking someone's an emotional fixer-upper, a mental fixer-upper, yeah. you're going to change their personality, out, out. Out. You have to cut it loose. They wear an ugly pair of shorts, you can buy them a new pair of shorts. You're right. I think that is a very traditional straight woman's role in a heterosexual relationship is Completely to dress agree. their husbands and their boyfriends like yep. their mommy is. And I think that that's like something that you can always take on. You're very mommy. You're very mommy. We, I mother. <laughs> yeah. I mother. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. so when you're looking, I, but I'm not saying when you look at someone's clothes on fucking hinge, yeah. if they dress bad, you're out. But it's like you have to look at people and be like, well, what is the Why? Why did you choose this picture? What yeah. point are you trying to make by choosing this picture? Who? Who are you trying to be? 
who is the person you're presenting as and who is the real you? Like you have to analyze these people deeper beyond those photos and those prompts. Why are they saying their favorite smell is a new book and fresh cut grass? Why? You know, like what are they yeah. trying to, what do they want you to see them as? And then who are they actually? Yeah. And I think if you just, you have to go beyond the superficial with those apps. And I think they're, they're greatly beneficial. I think that hinge is giving me the most options when it comes to like hearing different prompts like hearing what their voice sounds like like getting creative yeah. tinder is i think a little bit more like picture focused but i've never been a bio or like i'm not writing in a bio when someone writes a, in a bio and it's longer than two sentences immediately swipe left i'm gonna if i see a green check mark in a bio as in swipe like left. what does that even mean it'll be like looking for a hiker check like those things like you know it's like you're giving me a checklist yeah. and like i'm sorry but i can't keep and up. doesn't it make you kind of upset to think that there's someone who's like me it's yeah, me. me like you found me pick and me sometimes sometimes i felt like i was the pick me i was like i see them and i'm like no I am all of the things you want gotta be the love Let of me your be life exactly what you need the love of your life yeah but then my bio is like five eight Actually, you don't even have to have height in the five, any, eight. five eight. You don't even have to have your height in it anymore because you can put it in Tinder. Yes, you can put it as a feature now. So when you're tapping on their profile, the second photo will say their height. Because that's actually good though for Tinder. Because I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Putting it in your bio was always a statement to make. I feel it was always a statement to make, but it felt necessary. It feels necessary when you're dating because. If I was to show up to a date People and would someone say you're was six three, because on and this podcast I give bell, six three, and then I show up and in. they're like, "Whoa, whoa!" So I don't want to be like, like l hobbling in like a little little cute tip little penguin, in. like yeah. tiptoeing in through the tulips when this man is coming in there and he's like. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Right. So it's already taking you off the table for some superficial. People. And at the same, at the, and at the. And to that point, if someone can't, if someone is superficial about height, they're not for you. So that's, you're not wrong. Like, it's kind of a good thing. It's, it's like, kind weed, of a out, good thing. weed out the bozos. Weed out the bozos. Weed out the people that have the super long bio. We know why we're there. When like, someone's writing an essay in their bios for a dating app, especially on like Grindr or Scrub, and I look and I open up and I see two paragraphs. Yeah. Get a sub yeah. Start a newsletter. Yeah. What the hell? Reach out are to you Harper doing? Collins. Reach out to Harper herself. Yeah. Give Harper a call. See if she would give you a book. So because Penguin Random House. Yeah. I'm like, available. Hey, like I have a few words to say. Yeah, I don't want to see that on any app. I think that that's why, like Hinge, like you can get creative with the prompts, whatever. My my profile, like now, like thinking back on it, like I mean, like forever, I've been like the worst on my profiles. My pictures are horrible, and so are my prompts. But that's probably like not weeding it's probably weeding out a good amount of that people kind of like self-deprecating it dark. got really self-deprecating and dark yeah i'm probably gonna spiral about like body soon but <laughs> um, it feels like one of those episodes yeah, i'm like so we i think we're gonna there. pivot really hard really quick no but i just think that like it kind of goes to the insta okay it kind of go dating and instagram for me it's kind of one of the same like when when it started it was fun and then it was like i'm gonna post pictures because i'm hot right and then it's hard to break that shell when it comes to dating and putting yourself out there on the profile, then it's like, I'm just going to be push, putting photos out there that I look hot in. Well, yeah. And then it's kind of like, but I don't even gravitate towards the profiles that they're, I want to see someone who's like cool and fun, like give me personality. Then I'm like, I'm not even giving personality. You know? You know? Like my ass is all over Hinge. What? Yeah. Your ass is your ass is all over hinge is what you're saying. <laughs> My ass is all over hinge. Yeah. I think that <laughs> No, um, it's not actually. It's like it's like me in a speedo. Ass out? It's that picture? It's, no, no, no. It's like me with like looking over my shoulder. Okay. But I'm not like doing bot like I'm not like showing It like is curious because if you didn't know you and you saw that, what would you think of you? Exactly. It's hard to take that step back, but I think that when you're creating a profile, and this is for our single folks out there, those that are trying to date, it's like, take a step back. Sometimes it's also not about asking your friends if you think that their profile is good, because 
are your friends telling you the truth? No, fuck those friends. Fuck, fuck your those friends. Because your friends are going to be like, that's an amazing profile. Talk to me. Talk to Joe. Send- <laughs> okay, I want everybody to send your profile to Joe. Oh, my God. Yeah, please. Should we yeah. have people submit their, their profiles? profiles? Submit your profile. Email goodchildrenpod at gmail.com. <laughs> a screen recording of your Tinder profile. Yeah. And we will react to it. And yeah. I want you to include in your message, I give you the rights to use this video in your podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm Which, getting, that's legalese. You know, I that's really. That's kind of crazy of you if you accept that, if you want that. But you know what? We're going to, we're going to treat you with kindness and we're just going to oh, let obviously. you know and let us know too if there's any background story of like you're not finding success or you feel like yeah. someone might be judging you you feel like that certain picture is not the one let us know because i feel that way too um and i honestly would be willing to go through mine I'd i was be thinking willing that. to I go through to mine that. we'll because... have a whole episode dedicated to going through um um dating accounts so when it comes to dates Jeff, <sighs> when it comes to dates and dating in general are, what are some like you go on the date with them? Red flag. What are names? Red, red flag. flags. <laughs> names they, some, yeah. they say yes. It's a huge red flag. Red flag. Red flag. Um, a red flag for me. Well, if it takes a while to get a date locked in, it's a red flag. If they are taking a long, t- if they take a day to text you back every single time you text them, red flag. We're all on our phones longer than that. We're all on our phones more than that. Nobody it is simply you're kind of accepting already not being treated like a priority. And no one should treat you like a priority when they're first getting to know you. But at the same time, you should know that this person is at the very least excited to see you. If they are yes. not excited to see you, it is a red flag. Yeah. I think it's a complete green flag if you're texting before the date excited to see you. Yes. Or like excited for tonight. Like those things not waiting for someone to be like still on for tonight yes. because like when that you're is, texting when the still, you on, still for tonight, on for tonight go you know, in but go in with a grain of, of a grain of hope but what were you doing i was always having fun the, no i'm saying what were you doing for them to text you still on for tonight were you not were you not respond that's what i'm saying because well, i I'm feel saying. like i've gotten that before and i wasn't really messaging right. them well, that day yeah well are you also before. excited for that date probably not and none of this Every like date I'm, I'm bad at my phone shit. No, you're no one's bad. No one's bad at their phone. And I'm gonna call myself out. Like if I don't I'm text not. you back, it's 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 on purpose, or it's at the very least, it is just like if you're not texting someone back repetitively, you have to take some accountability and say it's not that you're bad at texting people back. It's that you are not prioritizing your friendships or your relationships in that way, and that could be fine. Give them a call, something. But if you're not making any effort to communicate with people who are who are communicating with you in the number one way that we communicate in society, what does that mean? And also, at the end of the day, I might not answer your group message. I might not answer your text message. But if you're changing your Hinge profile, if you're on Hinge and they don't respond to you in like oh, three days. And then they drop a new pic. They drop a new pic. And I'm like. Mm, that looks crazy that meal looks really nice did you just cook that meal but you didn't answer my message and then i get crazy and then i get crazy do you remember when scruff had stories for like two seconds yeah that was the craziest time if you weren't there there was a time and i would say 2021 when scruff the gay sex app decided to launch public facing stories in which everyone could just post anything they wanted to a story and it was geographically it was geotagged to your location and it was linked to your account so like if andrew wanted to post a whole pic to the scruff stories he would post it everyone in brooklyn would see it and you would click on your account and see exactly who it is and everything about that imagine walking around the next day imagine walking around the next day look at sniffies but at least sniffies is actually anonymous i can't even believe that app it's i still it's I fun. can't believe that. It's fun app. to look at. I know, but then you, I then I don't even do that because I'm like I'm a creep freak. I would be a creep freak before I was going on Sniffies. Like I don't go on it because I'm like, are you judging people who do? I'm not calling you out. I'm no. just asking sincerely. That's I like a little bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I am because you, listen, listen. I think I'm kind of getting away from. Was I? Did I have my whole era for sure? Sniffy, j- Sniffies just feels like. How much lower can we get? I'm sorry. Like, how much, like, 
you're not going to one show face. Like you're just going to lead with dick or ass or whatever. Like it's so to me animalistic and so like, and, but then I don't know. It's just like geographically you're seeing everything. And then it's like, it's like 50 people hooking up on Saturday. And I'm like, you guys, don't you want to watch like, what's up? We want to watch Netflix. You want to have fun? Do you want to talk? You're so senorita awesome. You're so not like the other girls. Stop. Tell me um, more about senorita awesome. I was going to say, you have no idea what I'm saying. It's like speaking <laughs> a different language to you. Um, I feel like with... It's a Scream Queens reference. Okay. I feel like with Sniffies, it feels more to me like a callback to like 80s gay scene in like mm. a purely sexual way it feels like you're walking into a dark room but it's digital yeah um does it feel safe no, no. but i don't think it's as bad as you're making it as bad as you're viewing it but i think that we're allowed to disagree i joe i completely agree and i don't think allowed. i could try to convince you otherwise no. and i don't think that at any point i could make would convince you because also how much do i believe in it yeah no i i don't think i'm going to be convinced by anybody about sniffies i think that like if you're on sniffies like keep sniffing if i'm not going to be on sniffies like consider these nostrils closed consider these for the first closed. time ever yeah for sure you're um, plugging up the holes um yeah absolutely um but back to dates back to like what are red flags what are green flags we i kind of wanted to bring it back to our childhoods because i don't yeah. know if you remember this but this podcast used to be about growing up in the late it's just like so many years that you could talk about <laughs> um we kind of what we did we shot ourselves in the in the feet when we did going year by year we wiped out yeah. so many stories we did in a chunk um but did you ever go on a date on a date have i ever been like in high school in middle school did you ever have a date of any kind joe no absolutely not i would say that the only date that i kind of had was with Lindsay in eighth grade and that was solely like at the movie theaters in a group seeing jennifer yeah but that's so middle school date. that was so middle school date and i again the entire time i was like nervous i was like sick i was like Oh my god! You're like, what if she makes a move? I'm like, I'm obsessed with her. Like, she's so stunning, and I'm gonna be her boyfriend. Like, that's gonna happen, right? You're like, I'm marrying her. I'm like, marrying like, her. Like, I have kids. I have, like, two door garage. Yeah, I felt like I already wrote out my future with Lindsay, and like, <laughs> it was looking really bright. And then the, but the thing about me, like, especially, and I guess it was probably the same feeling then as it is now it's like when you start to like somebody that's when i push them away like i stop talking the I get, snow glows white on, on the mountain, mountain tonight not, not a footprint to be seen that's exactly how i felt like i felt like i was on that mountain i felt like i was elsa i felt like i needed to run away and i felt like i i had a castle of my Don't own let them in i didn't want to let them in and i didn't want to let them see. see i didn't want them to see a lot and you had to be the good girl you've always been. Yeah, been. Um, but I think with with Lindsay or it's just like I got nervous. So like I probably would like tense up. Yeah. Or I'm like eating the popcorn. I'm happy that dates in middle school and dates in high school really consisted of movies. Well, it is. In- well, yeah, that's an amazing advantage. Who is making out in the back? You know. I wanted the me, courage. Me and me in college. But like I wanted that courage. Me I wanted in high that cr- school. You were sucking face in the back of the theater. Yeah, sucking face with Sarah Gallo. Sorry, Sarah. Sucking with Sarah. <laughs> sucking with- <laughs> That's a new podcast <laughs> coming to you soon. I know what you're talking about though. It's interesting that feeling like you're on a date and you can't be you can't enjoy the date. You no. can't pay attention to the person. You can't be present. You can't pay like you can't be normal because Mm-mm. in your head you are so caught up in the fact that you're on that date mm-hmm. like and so worried about being perfect yeah like that was i think the biggest roadblock for me for dating forever and yeah. put me into relationships i should not have been in because i did not know that dating was not 
the get a boyfriend challenge. Like, I did not know that it was not the, like, make this person like me challenge. Like, I thought I had to make every single person fall in love with me. Yeah. And that was the end game of a date and that they should love me by the end of that date and then they should fall in love with me. We should be boyfriends. We should get married. Like, that was my mentality going into dating up until, like, 2021. Yeah. And that, I think, was the biggest fucking detriment Mm. to my life to other people's lives. Yeah. But it was like, and I think that it starts then though. You're like, especially when you're gay, I feel like, oh. especially when you feel undesirable, you're like, if I can get one person to like me, at least I know that one person likes me. Oh, for sure. And if they've already expressed interest, I'm going to make sure they stay because yeah. God forbid I get rejected. God forbid they reject me. No, I can't, Im- again, I can't imagine the rejection aspect and I still haven't really you're getting rejected every day I am getting rejected every day I am actually getting probably rejected more than most people um but it's not happening to my face and I think that when it came to dating especially in middle school and high school and college too like the reason that I dated Jesse was because I knew she was also interested in me like people were like oh like you know talking about it so I was like oh this is so much easier like if she likes me I know she likes me. I'm going for this. Yes. Like, and also Lindsay, when you oh, feel Lindsay likes, whatever, like when you don't feel worthy of being liked and someone likes you, you're like, that is the kindest person I've ever met who is doing me the biggest favor of all time by seeing this disgusting monstrosity of a human that should not be loved and liking them. Yeah. You're like, I will do anything for you. I will anything because you like, I me. will go to the skate park for you. Well, yeah. I will see Jennifer's body with you. I wish there was like a way to like, you're like, you're into somebody and like, it's like a certain necklace and like the necklace is like, it's like, I'm into you. It's kind of like unspoken. It's like, that's a black mirror episode. Andrew, just go up to someone and say, Hey, you're hot. Be a man. You're 27. You don't need to be throwing my age around like that. You're 23. Thank you. And I'm obliterated by plastic surgery. Obliterated by plastic surgery. At <laughs> Have we talked about that? No, we haven't. I'm sorry. Like, this is a complete side note, but we did get a comment recently that we are two. This is what happens when two 23 year olds who. They were like, they look they, like, yeah, like they're, they've been obliterated by plastic surgery at 23 years old. Which kind of like. Is a double compliment. It's thank you so much so much i am not 23 years old and i have never had any no plastic plastic surgery surgery. and you know what let's put it to rest these lips there ain't there are no filler in these lips okay they might be full full of love full of lust and full of lusciousness but there is no lip filler in these lips Thank you so much. I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Has been lifted. Have been lifted. Yeah. Lifted. Lifted. Kylie Jenner, you better watch your back. Tell me more about your dates because. In current time? In high school. Let's talk sucking with Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I can't stop with it. It's so good. (laughs) Let's talk it because what what were those dates like? Like, what was your experience dating in high school? I feel like I've discussed it, but I don't think anyone. I'm learning one thing about this podcast: people are listening to us, and they're listening like here and there, and like they're cleaning their room. And we think people are sitting in a sensory deprivation <laughs> tank, watching us in a 64 inch TV screen yeah. with the headphones on yeah. only focusing on what we're saying they're getting they're either on the subway and something alarming is happening <laughs> yeah. or they're at their workplace and they're getting a, a slap ladies from their and boss. gentlemen can I have your attention for one moment please and, this, and we're literally like <laughs> dick cock lips bitch blah, blah. and like they're literally like mm-hmm. yeah no I'll get that spreadsheet to you in about five <laughs> perfect thank you so much <laughs> there was a lot of fear of intimacy because wow. God forbid I had to perform, you know, I think that carried through to last year for me. Oh, I feel Joe, like it yeah. only recently has been erased. But I remember just like, oh, I mean, like I loved Sarah. I love Sarah to this day. And she, it was just a relief because Sarah just wanted to hang out and like eat and watch movies. So we just like hung out. It was very similar to our, our yeah. friendship was me and Sarah. Um, 
we did some cute dates though i remember going to a pumpkin patch and i think maybe you were there we went to, i was um, i actually was i remember it we went to radio city and i think maybe you were there i think i was probably <laughs> as well we went uh what else did we do we went to adventureland i, I think there. maybe you were there that was yeah. post breakup though yeah that was like a week later um have i ever told the how i broke up with sarah yeah that it was and then i called her up i don't know i don't I know say them. it again say it, tell us again because i need to refresh her as well sarah i'm so sorry no, this, this is this, like this is the sarah episode it's the sarah it's sucking with sarah it's, it's not sucking with sarah um when i wanted to break up with sarah school was ending school had just ended and I was like, okay, perfect. Like, it's a clean slate for the summer. We'll give each other the summers to be apart. We'll come back in the in the fall and, like, it'll be fine. So I call her up. She's at Costco. She was at Costco with her mom. You, oh. I didn't know. I said, are you available to talk right now? She's like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. What's up, cutie? Yeah. And what's I up, said, sexy I, pants? Need to, I need to, I think that this has been so great, but I don't think that this is a right fit. And I remember her being like, okay and like kind of like really quickly wrapping up the phone call on her end she's like okay well i have to go bye and i was like fuck and like sobbing miserable 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 and then what's even worse no i dug i twisted this knife in such a sick and twisted way that the fact that sarah still speaks to me is a true testament to the power of second with sarah i would say two days later i had second thoughts and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I actually, like, I think I was realizing that I was going to lose a friend. Yeah. I did not want to lose Sarah as a friend. And that was really making me nervous. And I was like, well, I have to get back together with her. Yeah. So then I think I texted her and I was like, I want to get back together. Like, I'm really sorry. And she was like, perfect. Great. No, I'm Joe. Down. And the moment that she said that in my head, I was like, what the fuck did I just do? Why did I just do that? No, you're kidding. This, you're kidding me. So I had to call her back <laughs> that same, like an hour later and break up with her a second time. <laughs> you broke up with <laughs> second with Sarah SWS two times. And then five days later, we're like, do you want to go to Adventureland with me and Andrew? You are. Yeah. A monster. A monster. A monster. A, an actual like you're you are what the problem is with men like like i'm sorry like but you're different now this was 10 years or like yeah, however many years decade. ago it was 10 years ago 10 years ago over yeah 10 years ago you and this is the thing you were hanging with sarah you were watching movies you were eating swedish meatballs with her yeah you were doing all of these things and you i get it it's hard to break up with somebody in person in, in real because like how do you escape that right so like the phone call is fine at that point, though, also we were we were children without licenses. It wasn't like oh, we true. could like, meet up drive. somewhere. Like, I remember being like, "I'm gonna have Sarah's mom and my mom drive us both to Starbucks so I can break up with Sarah. And they have to both pick us up." I was like, "No, that's insane for everyone involved." I actually am in such disbelief that one, Sarah, if you're listening, which I know you are, I hope that you can still appreciate Costco the way that everybody else can still appreciate Costco. And I hope that when you walk up to those samples, you can recognize that the light and love in your life. I I literally cannot believe the double whammy. The she du- got double whammied like the weakest link like fell through the floor. Yeah, vibes. she got double dumped by Royal Hedges. Which is, I'll talk dump. I think you dumped before. Did I dump? I told. I, I mean, it wasn't really anything crazy. Go ahead. I mean, the the dump with Jesse. First of all, to your point, when I can recognize the difference between what intimacy in a relationship felt like for you and Sarah, it was friendship, right? It was yeah. like you were seeing movies, you're yeah. eating, you're doing all those things. Same thing with Jesse. She was like one of my best friends. Like, and we would sleep like we would sleep in the same twin size bed. Which can you even imagine? I can't imagine. Poor Jesse. Poor Jesse. Like, I was soaking those sheets and not in a way that you would think at a, a 20 year old would be soaking sheets. I'm sorry. Like, sometimes it's like, should we end the podcast? I was soaking the sheets in sweat. And, like, it's just like she stuck through that. Like, she swam through that. And you know what? Like, I also, like, when it came down to the nitty gritty and, like, we would, like, I would be hooking up there was one specific time that like i just ate a bunch of chips i ate a bunch of chips joe and i like i drank a lot of like liquids and had a lot of food because then i could like blame it on the fact that i needed to throw up instead of hook up 
Is that not the saddest thing you've ever heard? Anyways, Jesse, obsessed I'm with sorry. you. You were binge eating to avoid sex. Yeah. Do you think that that almost explains it all? Do you think that's almost to the core <laughs> of our of our twenty two twenty seven year long journey with food? Yeah. Yeah. Feeling sad, bingy, bingy. on the food. I'm like no, going to hook up. I'm like, we're kissing. We're Wee. doing some other things, and I'm like. I actually have to go to the bathroom. Then I came back and I'm like, I just threw up. You know? She's like, oh, it's okay. She's like, okay. Like, we don't have to, it's like, we don't things. have to, yeah, we don't have to anymore. And I'm like, okay, Barefoot Contessa sounds a really amazing right now. But yeah, so like, that was my experience dating. And then I broke up with her, obviously, across the world um, with a phone call during finals week. And then that's insane of you. I know. And she was such a good studier and she was so smart. And she was like, and I, I, just it was never I kept saying to myself it's never right it's never a right time but there's a wrong time and it was during finals week when she already had a ticket planned to go to Australia to visit me can you imagine it's like we're both like we should be we should be locked up, up. we should be locked up locked like, up and strung up yeah <laughs> locked up <laughs> strung up and silenced yeah silence us silence Please. us like someone do it because like if you don't we're gonna keep going like but yeah so that was that that was our dating experiences i think that what i've learned in life at this point from my childhood to my college years to now is if you feel discomfort if you're uncomfortable in those situations when you're going on dates with somebody that you're supposed to be liking Maybe they're not the one for you. And also have the conversation about why you're feeling uncomfortable instead of pushing them away and then spiraling. And be authentic. Be authentic. Do you think you're authentic on a date? I think on I date? think I think on date? most on, on the, the most date? recent date that I was just on, okay. I was very authentic. I was sucking my fingers. You know what I mean? Yes. Like and there was something so freeing about being like I didn't have to feel like I was dainty or feeling like like fitting a certain mold or getting something that like, oh, my God, I can't eat a buffalo wing on a date. Like, no, I was literally lip locking those wings like tongue through the bone, sucking fingers, like dipping in ranch, sucking ranch down. And, and this is when you've always been like, I'm so disgusting. Yeah. No one's ever going to want to date me because I'm a disgusting animal, piece of shit, but, disgusting slob. slob. But, but you know like, what? He was like he was doing the same exact thing because everyone's like that, and you freed him up. You free you freed up a situation for you both to be able to be comfortable instead of being like. Mm -hmm. When I first started dating Ross, I like did not eat in front of him for like yeah, two no. months. I like literally was like a like a idiot. Like I'd be like, no, I'm full. Like I had enough. Like, I was like so anxious. I would not eat. What it, that's a that has to be a universal experience. Yeah, I feel like you're taught like you're not taught it, but like well. We're kind of taught it, I feel like, being fat. Like, I feel like that, like, as a kid, it was so, I would, you never really cared. I never really cared. But I would always be like, I'm not really hungry. No, I'd be like, yeah, I'll have that. I mean, obviously, if you're ordering a food and somebody else's parents are taking you out, obviously, you're getting the cheapest thing on the menu. But when it comes to dating, it's like, I wouldn't get anything that necessarily was handheld for a while. You know, I wanted to cut, I wanted to place it in my mouth. I don't want to look so like a month day calm. of every little action you're taking. You're like chewing 45 times. You're like, mm -hmm. but now I'm like so lost in the food that sometimes I get the conversation is it's silent or yeah, but that's better. Normal. That's, re that's reality. That's reality. Yeah. You're not going to be talking nonstop over food Well, because that's a big issue I've always had. And I feel like I've talked about it before, but I have become so conditioned. I feel like because I didn't really have a social life and I think this is probably really true for like, so many people post pandemic like kids who were in the pandemic who were like teenagers like you watch tv you watch movies and you see how every i, remember, I talked about this in therapy a while ago but like you see before how you graduated before i graduated therapy i'm going yeah. back good for you yeah um but i would like see in movies like you'd see a date scene in a movie and it's just so like there's no awkward pause there's no weirdness and if there is it's the whole point of the movie mm. it's i'm amy schumer and yeah. I'm a fucking mess. Yeah. Or like, it's like, I am just perfect. Like I am incredible. Or you're Jennifer Lawrence and you're quirky, but you're also gorgeous. Yeah. And like, I would just be like, well, you have to be one of those things. Like you can't, like, there's no in between. Like there shouldn't be awkward pauses in conversation ever. Yeah. Ever. Like there should not be silences between two people. If you're in the same room, like dialogue goes on. Like, yeah. 
and realizing that that's just literally fiction yeah. and that's not how any conversation works. Like I have become so comfortable with sitting in silence between me and anybody. I'm like, this is literally part of life. Like you don't need to always be bantering. Mm-hmm. We also are never sitting in silence. I was just at, when you were th- saying that I was like, I think this is a, we should take a page from this book because we're only sitting in silence when we're watching something. And that was normal. And then any other time we're sitting in silence, it's we're mad at each other yeah. or we're not mad at each other, but, but we we're think thinking we are. Yeah. the other person is mad at each other. So then you get mad. Yes. Because you're like narrowly like that's the whole shelter islands yeah. to a T. It's yeah. like we were busy with other people and it became like, like hmm. it's literally mad at me. Like why is he so <laughs> we're mad at not, me? We're not riffing nonstop. Fuck him for being mad at me. Liter- um, and like, so it's okay to come to sit in the silence. It's okay to sit in silence for the next 10 minutes. We're going to sit in silence. And we're back. Ooh, come on, Joe and Andrew. Ooh, let's go to the drive-thru. Going on a trip with your favorite kids. Gonna grab a snack, then we'll be right back. Good children. On a stick, Joe. Gooey butter cake, fudge dip brownie. And wait until you see what they are. Cheddar cheese rings. Cheddar cheese rings. What does that even mean? Are you telling me it's just... Come on. Come on. We're on the way to White Castle. Which, like, again, I don't think I've had White Castle in 15 years. My family kind of loved White Castle. It wasn't, it wasn't, a, you've definitely had it at my house. That's why, that's yeah. why. I don't know. I feel like White Castle is the most frowned upon out of every fast food. It yeah. feels like it's the lowest of lows you could go. But I think that's something I've learned in life that I think a lot of people could agree is when they go low, you go high. And I think that that's how I feel about White Castle. I completely agree. When we go low, when they go low, we go really high and we're going to go high in caloric content as well. White Castle, my stomach's already like in a rough place. I've been tumbling and turning for a little bit. But I think that we'll get like a few sliders. Four yeah, sliders. Four. Total. Two each. They're small. More than that. No, I would say less. You want two sliders? Do they do that? No, I guess four sliders. Four sliders, I want a those gooey butter rings. cake on a stick, and the cheese rings. And then the red soda. And the red cream soda. Yeah. If they could do two sliders, I think genuinely it might just be wise for us. I kind of agree. I'm driving my mom's car to White Castle for my podcast. At 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. At 2 p.m. on a Tuesday because this is considered work for me. I can't believe this episode's turned into a vlog. I kind of think, listen, people have been saying, people they like it. People have been saying they like this. All right. And that's why I'm extending it because it's like, why kinda, not? Why not? Why not? You really are going on a journey, maybe through this back window of Long Island. Yeah. I don't know how much you're getting, but I will it, say. The foliage is so gorgeous right now. You would have so no beautiful. idea that we're right next to a Burger King. Do we almost just get hit? Is there nothing worse than turning into a fast food parking lot? Or is that, that's is shame. that my shame? That's, shame. that's, that's my shame. shame. That's the whole thing because some people shame. can just freely enjoy fast food and we have always been shamed for it. And so we have thrust that shame onto others. Yes, I completely agree. We've thrust agree. it onto others I and we can't agree. simply just enjoy going into a White Castle at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. I like, that's not, at, people are there. Do you know what I mean? People are there. there and people, there's, and like there's workers. Like, there's people work worker, there. People like, like, want to, like, give us the burgers. And, like, we are acting like we are the most insane people in the world. Like, we actually sound judgmental and fucked up. We sound, judge, we sound like the problem. We're, we're the problem. Oh, I'm not going to stop thinking about this for a few you weeks. You know what I mean? We're like, so oh, sorry. my God, we're getting White Man. Castle. People eat White Castle. People eat White Castle. It's yeah. a green light. Fuck yeah, I'm going to White Castle. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I actually I don't have a car on me. Me either. They have to take Apple Pay. <gasps> Andrew! Andrew! Joe, I didn't mean to Andrew. do that! What just happened was Andrew just almost drove head on into a pole. There it was inexcusable. Cheers. Cheers. It's almost giving Shirley Temple. It is. 
What's the red? Cherry? Cherry. It's a cherry cream soda. I am. Red cream soda. You know what I recently had was the Dr. Pepper cream soda collab. Very good. Was it like with like barks? With barks. It was very good because you know what the thing with Dr. Pepper, sometimes there's a bite to it. It's kind of <laughs> like, ooh. But the cream soda finish makes it smooth. It's a smooth finish. Next up, we have our cheese rings. Think onion ring without the onion and replace it with cheese. You got three, and I wonder if you were gonna be so kind as to like split. Cheers. There's no nutritional value. Yeah. I could take back 40 of these. Easy. Easy. Oh. Easy. It tastes like cheese whiz. Mm. We have our double cheese sliders. I'm gonna go into cardiac arrest. <laughs> So what you're working with here is a double patty, triple bun, cheese on both. I think you get a pickle in here. Oh my God. Onions. Yeah, a pickle, onion. Well, the onions are the best part. Wait, the smallest burgers, I forget. Yes, and look at how thin that patty is. Can you even see? All right. You actually can't beat it. You actually can't compare to a White Castle slider. The softness. I'm gonna say something that only the people from Long Island are gonna understand, but I think it tastes exactly like All American. I think it tastes exactly like All American, Joe. Well, there's a, there's, I think there's more of a artifice to this than All American. Mm -hmm. Like, there's almost a coat the throat that happens. A grease. Yes. Yeah. But it has the makings of an all-American burger. It's really divine. That's gooey butter cake. Not in my that's lifetime. Some, that's some freaking dry butter cake. That's not not my gooey. Oh no, it's like frozen. Take For a bite. bite, take a bite. Oh, you took the best bite? This is all the butter. What did you, did you want that bite? I wanted to do it from the side. Yeah, I obviously wanted that bite. If soft texture desired, allow the product to stand at room temperature for five to 10 before enjoying. They knew. It's been five minutes. Oh. It's been more than 10 minutes. It's pretty good. Come on. It's pretty good. No, I don't agree. You don't agree? Let me get another bite. I think we're accepting garbage with that one. What is this? What the hell is this? This is not gooey butter cake. And I know go gooey butter cake. I know a gooey butt, but I'll tell you one thing. It's it's not bad. It's like, it is good enough. Like that was a dollar and 49 cents. Like when you want a gooey butt buddy, but on the road, when you want a cake on the road. It's not a cake though. It doesn't feel like a cake. It seems to me that you're enjoying <laughs> it. Jeez. I think that's, that's that on that. Back to the studio. And we're back. Did you also hear what's happening with the West End? No. Andrew. No. Joe. They're making no. a reality competition of who will play the next Sky and Sophie from Mamma Mia on no. the West End. No. Yeah, it's like Finding All Woods. No. Yeah. I have chills. Yeah. Oh my. Who's going to play? Okay. One of us is lonely. Do you think? Yeah. Should we? Sky and Sophie. Should we go out for it? I think we have to. One of us is, is lonely. One of us is on, on waiting for the call. We have about 16 voicemails from Gerald. And you know what, Gerald? We'll get to those at some point. Gerald. You know what, Gerald? Hey, Joe. Hey, Andrew. It's Lexi. Um, I have a question for you guys, but it does require a little bit of context. So, early 2000s, cinematic masterpiece, The Cheetah Girls 2, was released. And there's this one scene, I don't know if you remember it, where, like, Chanel is meeting Luke's, like, rich family. And so, like, her and her mom are, like, wearing pearls, you know, wearing really nice outfits to impress the rich family. And, like, the, the family, like, comes out of the car, soccer ball is flying, they're all wearing normal clothes, and Chanel looks at her mom and she goes, I could have worn flip-flops. So, 
adding more context to this, me and my brother, ever since that movie came out, we, anytime there's something so, like, unnecessary and annoying that we're in the middle of, we're always like, I could have worn flip-flops. Like, you know, you're, like, at a meeting that you didn't have to be at, like, I could have worn flip-flops. You tell your friend to dump this guy, and she's like, I'm going to do it, and then they end up being together like I could have worn flip-flops. So now to the real question. What is your guys's like, m- I guess, your most iconic, like, I could have worn flip-flops moment? I could have worn flip-flops. That's actually like, such a good... That's so good. I have so many I could have worn flip-flops moments. Well, I, it's just like the stress and anxiety of anything. It- I would say we both really could have worn flip-flops. When we went to, we were invited to this event, and every invitation is a privilege and a blessing, and yes. we're very grateful. Um, but I think we were wrongfully invited to the event. Like, I completely I agree. don't think the invitation, the invitees knew what we did, who we were, and like how we did that. Mm. Um, so without naming what the event was, I signed up actually originally thinking I was going to go alone because I didn't hear from Andrew about it. And I was like, whatever, like I signed up. But then I was like the day before, like I'm not going to this no. alone. So I texted Andrew. I'm like, hey, reminder, like tomorrow is this thing. And he said, already in my calendar. I'll, Cause be, it, I'll be there. Because it was. So we get there. We get there. And immediately we regret being there. It was just not for us. It was okay. not for us. And again, we're not we're not saying what the event was, but I do want to just elaborate on like what was happening and feel free to cut out whatever you want yeah, to cut yeah. out. But it just was like when you are at an event with like a specific like specifically video like influencers that are like doing long form content, it just feels like you're all subject to um, their video without signing off on something and that's completely fine like I don't need to sign off on shit but it was like cameras were out already being like hey you guys we're here we've made we it were, and we were, we're in, in the, back the elevator mortified. we were in the elevator standing next to each other I was my head was facing down I was like <gasps> like like we were like coming in from the cold begging for help and there are people like immediately vlogging right just pointing the cameras at us and then we were not know, in the headspace for this and that makes me feel it made me feel like oh I'm shit not we suck i'm we're not pathetic. doing anything we're, we're pathetic. pathetic which we get into the space and speaking of pathetic everyone's name tags are out yep i find my name tag with ease andrew is searching and searching and, and searching. searching and i say andrew did you sign up and i was like joe yeah obviously i rsvp to this event like I don't know why my name's not here. Like, let me talk to the employee. So I went up to the employee and I was like, hey, like, my name is Andrew. I RSVP to this event. I'm actually here with my co-host. I'm just not seeing my name. Um, she, she was like, oh, let me let me help you. There's like two sections. So we're looking. It's not there. And she's like, you RSVP? And I'm like, I absolutely RSVP. Let me try to follow up, pull up the email. I'm like, oh, my God, I have no service. That's so crazy. She's like, okay, just give me your name. Give me your email. And I'll run downstairs and I'll get you a name tag. I go inside. You're like, go inside. I secure us two seats. There's food. There's drink. I'm on high alert. It is, again, like, like I am the level of stressed I would be if I had a gun pointed to my head. And I am simply sitting down for a seminar. Andrew comes in 25 minutes later, sits down next to me. I say, did you RSVP? I go, I didn't RSVP. No shot. No shot I RSVP to this event. And I kind of wish, I kind of wish I wore flip-flops because I, <laughs> we sat through that event. Joe, I, I, okay, I needed to gaslight you. I needed to tell you that I RSVP because I you wouldn't it because have it not helped truer. me. In that, it wouldn't have helped. It would not have helped in the situation. It would have made me a little bit more stressed. And I just needed peace of mind that I was going to get the, like I was going to get the badge. Like I was going to be fine. And then in that moment, we could have worn flip flops because at the rest of the event it was like make some content, and they we... sent us out to collab with the other creators there on content that was not what we do. do. Period. Period. It was. I I'm like this. I don't often see you like this. This level of anxious, like socially anxious. Joe was. I'm not kidding. Okay. Okay. We were so anxious 
that we were walking around. We were doing, we were like, what do we do? Like, let's make a video. Let's make a video. We're walking around. There's one creator approaches us and is like, let's make a video. Like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe we should do like the dancing one. And like, so we're like doing a dance. No, I'm sorry. That's not how that story went. She says, you got, what do you guys want to do? Whatever. You say, yeah, the dance question. She's like, okay, cool. Like, where should we do oh it? Whatever. God. Then she, I blacked this out. She goes, let me just get off live. And she's been pointing her phone at us and she's been on live. On live. Having a conversation with us. And I'm like, hi, Richard. <laughs> How's it going, Richard? <laughs> and oh. yeah, she was pointing her phone at us and I was like, okay, now I feel really uncomfortable. And then she was like, let's do a video. And I was like, okay, let's do the dancing. Let's do the dancing one. The crying. So we started doing the dancing. I said, one. I can't dance. So you guys do it together. And I was like, okay, Joe, <laughs> we'll dance. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I felt like you were like, I need to go to the bathroom. I said, where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? So then you started going to the bathroom, and she started following you to the bathroom. And I was like, oh, he's actually going to the bathroom. And then I found the people that were running the event, and I actually just stuck by them and started having a conversation. I'm in the bathroom. He's texting me. Sobbing. Hysterically <laughs> sobbing with the door locked. <laughs> sobbing. Like, actually having this moment where I am like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I here and why am I sopping? And as I'm crying in the bathroom stall, I just hear people coming in and out making content, being like, what's up, you guys? Check out how sick these bathrooms are. Like, get some content in me. I'm coming out of this stall. I am literally weeping, feeling like if I step outside, I'm back on camera and I just could not fucking do it. Oh, my God. It's actually so funny. Joe was texting me from the stall being like, Andrew, like, we have to leave. Like, I don't know what to do. With, like, I'm in the stall. I'm sobbing. I'm crying. Like, please, like, please, we have to go. And then we walked across the street and got ourselves a little drink because we deserved it. And we said, what is wrong with us? We said, what is wrong with us? Why did we do that? And we could have worn flip-flops. We could have worn flip-flops. Yes. Yeah. And just like that. And just like that. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Good Children. I hope you enjoyed your stay, but it's time for you to go now. And you know what to do. Do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, write a little something nice. Spread the good, good word. word. Tag us in your Instagram stories. Like, if, you're, if you're seeing one of our reels, if you're seeing one of our TikToks, if you're hearing one of our clips and you're like, you're oh my God. seeing one of it. our little billboards. Tag you're seeing us. a billboard of us. Go ahead and post it and tag it. Go ahead and post. 34th and 7th. 34th and 7th. This is, I think maybe it's over. It might have been over. It was for the past three weekends and it's fine if you missed it. We'll be on another billboard soon. Soon. It'll soon. be a wanted poster. But you know where to find us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, on TikTok at Andrew underscore Muskie. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. And otherwise, I'm going to keep dating. I'm going to keep being myself. And I'm going to keep sucking these fingers until someone wants to put a ring on that finger. Sucking with musky. Sucking with musky. Yes, I'm broken hearted. Blue since the day we parted. Why, why did I ever let you go? Mamma mia. Now I really know. My, my. I should never let you go. Let that one sink in.